Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast for the Ineos Grenadiers 2024 preview, as well as some Pod Pog announcements. He, uh, I mean, maybe we could have, if we were serious people, Benji, uh, looked up when the UAE uh, team announcements and media day was <laughs> and then done the preview after that, but we didn't. So here we are uh, with a little bit of news as well for Pogaccio, which we'll lead with, in fact, because it is sort of hot off the press. And then we'll get into the uh, classic Ineos preview as we do normally. But Benji, what is Tade Pogaccio's schedule and the big announcement? Yes, sir. Is it worth an emergency podcast? Maybe. Is I this still no. an emergency podcast? Maybe. Who knows? But his schedule is the following according to uh, the interviews the team has given and he has given on the media day. First of all, on Saturday, RC has announced Pogacar was going to be riding Giro d'Italia. So let's be honest about it. You've been preaching it for the last decade <laughs> that he should be riding yeah. the Giro in 2024. Jesus, the, the years are flying. To. Yeah. And the rest of his schedule also announced on the media day, which is the day after, so on Sunday. So Strada Bianca, Milano Sanremo. The next one is unsure, because first I heard Tireno, but then I was told not Tireno and maybe Catalonia instead. But afterwards, LBL, Giro d'Italia, so kind of the, the Remco way last year from LBL to Giro d'Italia. And then after that, Tour de France, so the Giro Tour double, but hey, that's not enough yet. Giro Tour Olympics triple, but no, 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 we're not ready yet. Giro Tour Olympics Worlds quadruple? Is that a thing? I think it's a thing now. Quebec, Montreal, because somehow those deserve to be mentioned in the same list. And in Lombardy at the end. So that's a list of which I believe that he can win a lot of races next year, actually. He can. He can, uh, especially in the Giro d'Italia. And of course, in Canada, he's, he's great and he'll be the favorite for the world championships. Yeah. Uh, and this is the best opportunity for San Remo for him because I think Van der Poel said he's not doing it. I can't remember I'm if Van Aert sure. said he's doing it or not. I think Van Aert um, said he wasn't doing it. I think Van der Poel, okay. I'm not sure. He might have said something along the lines of, I've won it already. I'm now focusing on others. I'm not 100% certain though. So this news came out in two steps. There was the Giro, obviously, because, you know, they opened uh, the checkbook uh, and the route for him. There was the Giro announcement the day before the UAE media day, or yep. two, I think, where he was doing the Giro. So then there was actually then a 24-hour period where, like, is he doing the Tour or not? Confirmed then at the media day, he is doing the Tour de France. So uh, can he be the first person to do the Giro Tour double since uh, Pantani in the 90s? Um you got to be in it to win it. It's certainly a Giro parkour where the competition and parkour will suit him a lot. Yeah. And then what was curious was the, he said, oh, I'll do one small stage race before the Giro. And then I think Machin retweeted or reshared something where it was like a schedule with Tirreno in it. And then Volta Catalunya was claiming Poggy was doing Catalunya. So I yeah. it seems he's doing, he's Catalunya. Um, okay. Which well. has... So he's going to win the stage to uh, Keralt. It's a new, it's a climb to a sanctuary up at Berga, 2.5k, okay. 7%. He's got that one already done. So um, no Tour of Flanders though, Benji. How does that make you feel? <laughs> Is it because I'm Flemish that you're asking that as, a, as uh, an iconic usually... Flemish person? Yeah. No, 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 no. I Honestly, I wasn't expecting him to ride RVV after winning it last year, especially since... Even if he wouldn't ride the Giro, I'd be in my head of like, oh, he wants a perfect run into the Tour de France and therefore doesn't want to risk it again, so no RVV. But with Giro next to that and a, a peak that he needs from Giro Tour Olympics, at least in that period, then I'm like, that's very difficult to combine with the classics. Although he's not like Wout van Aarde. He's not like uh, a, an 80 kg rider in the classics and a 77 kg rider in the, in the, in the mountains. That's, that's not what Pogacar is. He doesn't need to move up and down four or five kilo, uh, kgs between the, with the two types of races. But it's still not an ideal preparation, I reckon, considering the Giro comes closely after, the Tour de France comes closely after yeah. that, then Olympics. So uh, I understand that. He, yeah. Additionally to that, you're right. He does ride LBL where he did crash, which true, LBL... True. And that's after it's weird. RVV. I feel like... I remember a lot of big crashes from LBL recently, 
compared to RVV. As in, yeah, I remember Laporte yeah, going into a ditch. Yeah, high speed crashes. Yep, in the descents, like Alaphilippe, for example, with Bardet then going towards him. Yeah. Then the crash from Pogacar, and, well, I only remember two, so... <laughs> I only remember one, one from RVV, so points made. <laughs> There's probably loads more random crashes in RVV. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Benny had a big crash, I think, going into a big right hand or from memory when Yumbo were pacing. Okay. Might have been into the Tyenberg uh, after then. Anyway, I think it's the correct decision to do the Giro d'Italia. He'll go in as the red hot favorite. The other yeah. main contenders at the moment look like Geraint Thomas and Simon Felipe Yates. Mate. Uh, and Keanu Brooks on Bora or Yumbo. When Thomas saw this news, he must have been like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, and when when I say the route really suits him, like what do I mean by that? If you go look at this Giro route, it's a welter parkour. Seriously, yep. apart from one stage, and even that one stage is not like brutal, brutal, brutal. That's the Lavinia stage, which I think stage fifteen, uh, which does go to twenty three hundred meters twice, does have an eighteen k climb, but I think the chance of that being cancelled is over seventy five percent. Lavinia is very cold. Uh, it, I'm I'm not I'm not even it's being tongue in cheek. It's ve it's very cold there. And the snow recedes and the weather, you know, late. So doubtful about that Queen stage. The Stelvio stage is weird. You've already said your piece on that, Benji. And you think about, <laughs> like, stage three finishes on Europa. It's got, like, two medium warm-up climbs. And then 12K, 6.5%. Bang. That's, like, poggy bread and butter. Yep. Right there, he's going to put 20 seconds on Tom. Maybe 15 seconds on the road on Thomas with his burst. And then 10 bonies. Yep. And then Prati de Tivo, he already won on. In, in Torino Adriatico. So it's a really good route for him. I uh, guess the thumbs up from me, this decision. So how does it affect <laughs> his tour? We're about to find out. I think mean, no one really knows. He's not done two Grand Tours in a year before, I don't think. And it's also the thing where I always wanted him to do two Grand Tours. I just expected it to be Tour of Vuelta in the previous years. But now with this yeah. parkour of the Giro, it's understandable that he might consider these two. And reality is that if he arrives at the start of the Giro, then he's likely to win the Giro. Like, his odds before the Giro are going to be tiny. And yeah. Pogacar is only the... Pogacar is literally the one rider where I would consider doing Giro Tour Olympics Worlds. Because he can win for an extended period of time throughout the year. While a lot of other riders do that. So it's a rider where I would want to see that experiment happen. And it's also like, it's not just those races. He can win Strade, he can win Sanremo potentially, he can win Catalonia, he can win LBL, he can win the Giro, Tour de France. I, I find it difficult to see at the moment with Vingo being so dominant. Quebec and Montreal, the man can win both to be honest. World Championships in Zurich, he can win. Lombarda, he can win. He can win 95% of his schedule. The Olympics, I think, will be tough, but uh, definitely yeah, right, Worlds right. will be the, the heavy favourite. I don't know if he'll do the TT at the Olympics as well. Uh, that's going to be, it's going to be really difficult to carry that shape. So yeah. and really, that's a really flat difficult. Probably yeah. wins anyway. Yeah, facts. So <laughs> I mean, if there's anyone that can carry shape, it's Pogaccia. So you know, that was interesting to see at the Giro. Apparently, he'll be supported by Björk, Vine, Micah, I think Groschartner and Milano will be going for a sprints as well. So interesting that they're pairing a sprinter with Poggy. The two he doesn't team, need it. A full team this, at the Giro. No, no, and you know, Milano can pull the flat sometimes too, no problem. Um, <laughs> and the tour team was, was much more interesting, which has everybody. It's like a Josh Brolin in the trailer of Sicario 2, Day of the Sold Dia del Soldado, where he's speaking to Benicio del Toro, and he says, um, we're going to start a war. He's like, with who? He's like, B between everybody. We're, like, we're bringing everybody. And uh, that's what the UAE team is with Adam Jates, Juan Ayuso, Joao Almeida, Sivakov, Soler, Wellens, Pollitt, and Pogacar, which is um, one and a half rulers, about <laughs> four pretty good climbers, uh, <laughs> and then two, you know, GC leaders. So, very odd team, but. Um, Anyway, there's a lot of climbing I'm there, but not I, don't, sure. I don't think climbing's been the problem. I don't think they see themselves as just two GC leaders. I think Almeida wants to go as leader. I think Yuza wants to go as leader. Pogaccio wants to go as leader. Yates is probably the one where I believe that he might be willing to ride for Thomas. And that's a funny part, because he was the He's second best climber. He's better two. <laughs> 2023. But that being said, 
destined to blow up? As in, a user, what's happening here? Because you, there's no way you can keep all those people happy. Because like <laughs> Almeida and Ayusa are not Micah and Groshartner. And Sivakov's Sivakov's a good professional. Like he would have gone yeah. to the Vuelta and done a job if he had to. Yeah. Even when he was leaving the team, they shouldn't afflict him. Um, uh, Sivakov's a bit more experienced, and he, you know, I think he's happy to just go to the tour. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. That looks like a a fire waiting to blow up there. Three more small things. Ayuso, to be honest, is also a Tour de France focus his schedule. Almeida as well. I feel like I'm slightly bearish on Almeida, as in his schedule is so Tour de France focused. Yes, he he goes to Algarve, Basica de Figuera, Paris, Catalonia, and so forth. He can compete for DC and Catalonia. He loses yeah. him and McNulty, don't they lose Paris Nice before it gets 100 k's away from Paris normally? <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> and then Catalonia Poggy's there. Swiss is one where I find it intriguing, That's a good but, one. In, but throughout the year, I also feel like what is good for Almeida? In this year, he might not even top five the Tour de France. Like, top five would be his. His goal, I reckon, at the Tour de France, he's probably going for podium, but I just don't see that yet. And I'm kind of on the page of, I would have rather seen him do the Giro, but with Pogacar and the team at the Giro, that's like, it wasn't going to happen anyway, I guess. But anyway. Do you, that, do you think there's a tactical advantage to bring all those guys to the Tour? They can like do the Jumbo Vuelta thing? Breakaways and multi-leaders? I think it's better than having just Pogacar, in my opinion. So there's that. I think a Yuzo there is a is a good rider to kind of throw yeah. throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks. Almeida, I'm not sure how that is going to help a multi leader strategy because he's just going to hang on a, and hope for dear life. Adam Yates, you can play around with similar fashion to the Tour de France in 2023. If this will all make the difference against Vingegaard, currently I don't see it yet, but I'm willing to see a battle. So let's hope it does something for the sakes of entertainment in this sport. Talking about Jonas. He, Jumbo Visma, I think Zeman confirmed that Vingega is not riding the Giro d'Italia in a GCN article, so um, that's that. But what, do you expect like any other changes in the in the sphere of like GC riders that were planning to do the Giro and are now thinking, fuck, if this is happening, then I might do a different Grand Tour instead because I don't want it to be chopped up into pieces, small sushi pieces by Pogacar? Yeah, but if you then you do the Tour, <laughs> he's still there. Yeah. And so is Roglic and Avonapol, so I don't think it changes that at all. I yeah. think I think you still I don't think it changes that to be honest. Um anyway, that was the uh, UAE schedule announcements.